substitution. So there are many factors from which we can decide that whether reaction takes place through elimination or through substitution or by using these factors we can decide that the product will be elimination or product will be substitution. Now we will discuss these factors one by one. So there are two factors, factors affecting E1 or SN1 product ratio or factors affecting E2 or SN2 product ratio. So it is confirmed that if we carry out the reaction either taking place through E1 SN1 mechanism or E2 SN2 mechanism, there are some factors. If we use that factors, we can convert our reaction to E2 or E1 mechanism or SN1 or SN2 mechanism. So the number one factor is the substrate structure. Substrate structure is important. By changing the substrate structure, we can get the more and more alkene product. For example, number one is the structure of the substrate, you know that the primary structure, if we have a primary alkyl halide, it will give more and more substitution reaction and less elimination reaction. Secondly, and similarly, if we have a tertiary compound alkyl halide, it will give the maximum uh, alkene ratio and less uh, substitution ratio. For example, if we use the tertiary, primary, secondary, tertiary alkyl bromide, you can see that by using the primary alkyl bromide, we will get the only 10% elimination product and 90% is substitution product. But by using the tertiary alkyl bromide, we can get the 90% alkene. So it means if we go from primary, second to tertiary, the elimination product will increase and substitution product will decrease. In substrate structure, second one is the factors which can stabilize the transition state, which will increase the alkene ratio. It means that if we have a structure in which when the transition state is formed and if the transition state is stabilized then these factors can increase the alkene ratio. For example, in this case you can see when the carbene ion bromide is removed and carbene ion is formed, this carbene ion is not stabilized by any other factor. So we have only 1% alkene ratio. But in this case when the bromine is removed then after removing the bromine the carbene ion is formed and this carbene ion negative charge here is stabilized by this benzene ring so this one has 99% ratio similarly if we have a double bond here this double bond also will stabilize the negative charge when it comes on this carbon this stabilize when negative charge comes on beta this stabilize so the all the factors which stabilize the double negative charge in transition state they will give the more and more alkene ratio and third one is the increased branching increase the alkene ratio if we have a compound in which the uh, transition state is formed between two carbon which has maximum number of methyl groups then that will give the maximum amount of the alkene ratio so if the alkene is formed between carbons which have maximum branches then more alkene ratio will be obtained now we'll discuss the second factor Okay, now we will discuss the uh, second type factors which are the um, steric factors which will affect the elimination versus substitution. So in steric factors, first one is also the same substrate structure. So when we carry out the reaction, elimination reaction, as you can see, when you carry out the reaction, so from the transition state, when you go to the elimination reaction, the uh, sp3 hybridized carbon is converted to sp2 and sp2 remains the same but here in this case the sp2 hybridized compound is converted to sp3 in uh, the substitution reaction so in substitution reaction the steric factors increases if you can see that you have now one to three groups attached and this one is converted to, to sp3 hybridized four compounds has to attach so this is a steric repulsion and here in this case the elimination reaction the number of carbon uh, compounds attached to this carbon is decreased so due to the steric factors the reaction will be favored so elimination reaction will be favored so when you use different type of r groups which are more branched more branched r group will be used 
then the steric hindrance will be increased and the elimination reaction will be favored. So in summary, if we use the more branched compound here on this carbon from which the compound has to be released, then the reaction will be elimination. Uh, the steric hindrance will favor the elimination reactions. The second one is the attacking base nucleophile. Similar effect, if we use a more uh, branched and a bulky attacking base, then this will favor the elimination reaction because this will not act as a nucleophile, this will not become attached and it will only remove the compound so the elimination product will be favored. For example, if we use this compound ME3CO as compared to ethoxide anion, so ethoxide ethanol base will become attached itself so it will act as a nucleophile but if we use a bulky base like this one three methoxy group are attached, methyl groups are attached to CO so this will not act as a nucleophile and it will only act as a base so it will increase the elimination product. Similarly, triethylamine, pyridine, these are the bulky bases so when you use these bases this will only increase the elimination product and there will be no substitution. Third one fact is the leaving group. So a leaving group effect is also very important. If the leaving group is very easy to leave, then this will give you a substitution product. Otherwise, they will build an elimination reaction. For example, trosylate will give you less elimination product than bromine, than SMA2, and a bulky leaving group will give the maximum amount of the uh, elimination product. And last one is the rise in temperature. When you increase the temperature, the elimination product will be favored. How? When you increase the temperature, the compounds that are present in the product will be increased. The number of molecules will be increased. So as you increase the number of compounds, the entropy will be increased. Entropy will be positive. And you already have discussed that when you have a positive entropy, this will give you a more and more negative value of delta G, free energy. So the reaction will be favored. So if we increase the temperature, the number of molecules that are entering in the compound will be increased. So as a result, entropy will be more and more positive and free energy will be more and more negative and as a result, the elimination product will be favored.